And thank you so much for tuning in to Discover Your Best Self podcast. Today we are talking diversity and inclusion um, from an executive standpoint and from a corporate standpoint. So I'm so excited to have Miss Tiffany Pay to come and, um, you you know, have this conversation with us about why diversity and inclusion is so important in the workplace and outside. So Tiffany... Thank yes. you again, like I said, for deciding to be a part of this because um, I feel like this topic is, you know, number one, kind of like um, at the top of people's minds. You know, we, right. there's right. a lot of articles, a lot of new people coming in the forefront. And so, you know, you can give us some insight on t- into why, you know, this is um, important and why your role, you know, is relevant and what it is that, you know, what what exactly you are, what, what you are doing in that role. Mm-hmm. Okay. So briefly, tell us why you decided to come on the podcast first. Man, you know, I, I felt like this was an opportunity to really um, address DNI from an internal perspective and just kind of share some things that I've learned um, in this role and, and anything I could share with other people to kind of move the needle on this topic and debunk some of the myths. Sure, sure. And so tell us about yourself, who you are, um, you know, where you come from. All right. So um, I'm originally a small town girl. Uh, I grew up in a small town uh, outside of Nashville, Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. Okay. So uh, wasn't super diverse, (laughs) (laughs) but I had never experienced being excluded or, you know, discrimination until I went off to college. Right. So, you know, I think being in a place where um, I could be comfortable in my skin has helped me in my uh, career. Okay. So, um, and and before you move forward, yeah, because absolutely. What was since you haven't really had that kind of experience? Mm-hmm. What was that experience in college that that first of all you even took notice like oh something's different here? So, um, I think back to a situation. Um, I was living in the dorms, mm-hmm. and I, I had a couple of. Um, I wouldn't say roommates, but hallmates Mm -hmm. that uh, were of another persuasion. Okay. (laughs) And, um, you know, we got along, you know, just fine in the dorms. But, you know, how you go home with friends over the weekend Mm -hmm. and uh, one of them stated, well, sorry, Tiffany, you know, you can't come home with us because we can be friends here on campus, but you're not really welcome. Oh, wow. You know, in my hometown. And, you know, even some statements about them still having – uh, this is so difficult to say. Uh, hanging trees. Oh, from yeah, where, from back where in the day. From? Where were they from? Oh my gosh. So uh, rural rural areas okay. in uh, East Tennessee. So East this Tennessee. wasn't okay. yeah, it wasn't in Texas. Okay. So you know that was my first uh, experience with you know understanding the discrimination and being ostracized. Mm-hmm. So uh, from that, I was like, wow, you know. This is really still mm-hmm. a thing, even though they right. didn't treat me differently. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just the space that they came from. So. Right, right. Um, and even during my uh, internships in college, so one of my jobs in college, I worked for a small minority-owned uh, business. Okay. And uh, working for this lady, she gave me a lot of visibility in how she won projects and, you know, the necessity for political ties Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just seeing the struggles she went through just to Mm -hmm. get a seat at the table as a black woman Mm -hmm. so that was part of what uh started the spark Mm -hmm. with me wanting to go into this space okay and so how did you make your way into this space because you don't just start out and say okay out of school i'm gonna be that (laughs) diverse and inclusion lady (laughs) So, you know, it was really kind of a a curved path how I got here, right? So I was in procurement and contracting Mm -hmm. uh, in oil and gas. I used to be in the oil and gas industry before switching over to construction. And uh, there was an opportunity to be on the DNI board. So they said, hey, you know, Tiffany, would you consider uh, joining this committee? This is something we're starting, and we're trying to get um, a diverse sampling of employees. So it was an additional assignment. So I said, you know, I took it on and it allowed me to get um, 
a leadership perspective on DNI and begin to do some internal coaching, right? Okay. And then that turned into um, supplier diversity, right? Mm -hmm. So in procurement and contracting, um, you have the responsibility to bring in diverse businesses into your pipeline. Okay. So again, yet another responsibility it wasn't really part of my job, but I said, hey, you know what? This is something that I can learn. It'll augment my skill set. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I find passion behind, right? Right, right. And from there, it turned into uh, a full-time full time gig. Full-time so, gig. Good, mm -hmm. good. I love that. So I like hearing the process to get into where you are yeah. because a lot of times we skip that mm -hmm. and we don't recognize, like, you know, we see people where they are, mm -hmm. but we don't know what that story is getting there. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, it's important, for, you know, for you to have told that backstory mm -hmm. and you getting to that process. What were some things that you had to, um, you know, and they may be good things like some successes or even some lessons that you had to learn mm -hmm. to even get into that path of, you know, where you are now. Okay. So I'm a firm believer in writing things down, okay. right? So I, I keep a journal. For me, it's a, a prayer journal. But yeah. even if you are of different faith, mm -hmm. right, I, I would suggest you do that because uh, the role that I'm in is something that I put in my journal probably four years ago, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it manifested. So it also gives you... Um, a visual reminder of where you're going right. and it also helps you plot out the steps and decisions that you need to take to get there. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I did is I studied different roles in the organization, right? So a lot of people think, okay, well, I'm in procurement, so I need to just look at the career ladder in procurement. Mm -hmm. So I like what you said, study. Okay. Yeah. Like, say that again. <laughs> what did you do? You had to... <laughs> I had to study. Yes. <laughs> like, people don't want to learn, like, you know, their craft. You have to, even what I'm doing right now, like, I have to always... Figure Absolutely. out better ways, your craft, so that you can get to that next level. Absolutely. Always be um, a student. And you also have to recognize the fact that as you move up the ladder, it may not be your department, but you're going to work with other departments. So the more you know about um, or other organizations that you're going to cross paths with, the better you are and the more marketable you Absolutely. are. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's powerful because – to be more marketable, even within your own organization, what type of leverage and power do you have now? Uh, to be more marketable. Mm -hmm. So run that run that back for me. Again. Yeah. So like, number one, you said, OK, I have to study to get there. You mm -hmm. know, I need to take my time. You know, what does that ladder look like for me to get to where I want to be? Mm -hmm. So when you become more marketable, and you're adding those things to your, you know, resume mm -hmm. or, you know, how does that give you more power and um, leverage? So I think you open the door to establish yourself as a thought leader. So companies, when they're looking for folks to promote, you don't have to have every single skill set, mm -hmm. but be a thought leader. Be that person that's, you know, spoke up or, you know, be a subject matter expert at what you do so you become a trusted resource right mm -hmm. so in a, a previous role that I had I was the only person doing DNI. so even though it was vendor diversity or supply diversity um, they didn't have a platform so by promoting the program that I had senior leadership came to me and said hey well you're the only person running something formal right now with DNI, so we'd like for you to be part of the steering committee mm -hmm. okay so then you become part of the space that drives the vision for the organization mm -hmm. right so then you become the go-to person for that particular subject matter right mm -hmm. and that positions you um, for exposure Right. You know, you're presenting for the executive leadership team. Mm. So when they think of opportunities to move up or positions that they create, they might necessarily well naturally come to you because mm -hmm. you've proven yourself as a thought leader. That that right there, which you gave that information is so important for other people to hear, because they I think that a lot of people don't understand that when you step up and you decide mm -hmm. to do that, um, like you said, putting yourself in a position where now you're seen as an expert and now mm -hmm. people come to you yes. and you're not always looking yes. for something and you want to put yourself in that position and people are scared. They're, mm -hmm. feel, they're fearful of um, doing that. 
Mm -hmm. well, I don't I don't want to be that person at my job or, you know, because I'm, you know, a person of color or whatever. Or now they're going to look at me this way. It's like, no, actually, you're put you're you're putting yourself in a position to win mm -hmm. if you do it correctly. Right. Right. Yeah. Excellence attracts opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Oh. Um, so what does it really mean for a company to be um, diverse and inclusive? Hmm. So that that can uh, be approached in multiple ways. I, I think, you know, there's two sides of it. There is the vendor and supply diversity side of it. And there's also the employment diversity. Right. So from an, from an employment diversity standpoint, you're intentionally looking for diverse talent. Right. You're looking for um, diversity in age, gender, sexual orientation, you know, um, generational differences mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. um, so all of those aspects um, also you're creating opportunities to retain that talent because I know um, some organizations they can attract the talent but they're not doing anything to move them forward right or to level the playing field or mm -hmm. looking at some of their barriers to promotion or assigning them mentors and champions right so you have to be intentional about that on the employment diversity side um, as far as um, vendor diversity you know, also taking down barriers there, looking at what some of the small businesses struggle with to get into the market, making sure you, you know, make smaller scopes for those small businesses to get into the door, looking at And why do we need that, though? Because so, some people are like, I mean, so yeah. what? I mean, what, we already have another business like this. So what? What does that mean? So I think companies have to take it from a perspective of, you know, diversity is definitely tied to your profitability, mm -hmm. right? So just how, you know, you look at, you know, where your makeup is sourced or where your food is sourced. Now consumers are smart. They want to know what is part of the supply chain, you know, for the businesses that they're the consumers of, right? So if, you, if I find out you're not doing anything to support my community or, um, diverse businesses mm -hmm. i'm less likely to do business with, with you, you right yeah. so and i so that right there is so important because for example like i can think of two specific examples mm -hmm. um one is there's a there's a company called the lip bar it's a black black woman owned yeah. business and yeah. she just got into target and so t for me to see a big business like target mm -hmm. you know include her mm -hmm. in you know putting that brand there that's major so for me I'm like oh great I love going to Target already but now you know someone is representing me in this space um you know Walmart I'm not really a huge fan of Walmart <laughs> yeah. but you know um there's someone here from Texas you know the uh, what is it um uh She's happy hair. Yes. They just opened, you know, their storefront inside. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. They're in, in Walmart. So it's like, wow, you know, for you to support that, that is a huge, yes. you know, and it makes me feel included as yes. well. So, yeah, like you said, it opens other doors for them. Yes. Um, and for us to see to see that makes a huge difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consumerism drives a lot of uh, business decisions. Absolutely. So if you see it, and you see a diverse vendor, make sure you support them mm -hmm. to let that company know that, yeah, this was a good decision and you need more decisions like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so what are your thoughts? And I have, I know we kind of already <laughs> talked about this, but, okay. you know, I've been seeing a lot of, you know, articles and, you know, breaking news, you know, all of these huge companies like Starbucks and, you know, um, black women are kind of like the face of <laughs> diversity and inclusion and you know how do you what are your thoughts on that and us representing those roles do you feel like sometimes it's checking the box for those companies or what is it that they just feel like you know because I don't think it's a coincidence mm -hmm. yeah okay um so I would say uh from my perspective or it's been my experience that I've been fortunate enough not to be a, a check the box hire, mm -hmm. right? Um, but uh, I do see the trend and uh, operating in that space. And I think when you have the DNI uh, conversations, women are always perceived as a little bit more approachable, mm -hmm. right? I could agree. And uh, sometimes, um, for lack of a better term, being a black woman, sometimes you're seen as a safe minority right hmm. and uh, people are more open to receiving what you have to say if they feel comfortable 
talking to you, right? So I think as um, a woman where we possess a lot of soft skills, mm-hmm. right? And um, being a black woman, being able to speak from um, a minority standpoint has opened some of those doors hmm. um, for us in that space. Yeah, I could agree on that. I think that that's that that's a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And also, like you said, being able to open the doors for us. So, mm-hmm. yeah, at first it may not have been, you know, a C-suite role right. or executive, yes. but we can turn it into those roles to create more opportunities for us and visibility. Yes. yes. So if you play those cards right, then mm-hmm. absolutely. If that company is willing to play, though, right. and not just using that as, right. you know. I think to make sure that it's not just a check book uh checkbox role mm-hmm. you have to have the power to make decisions yes influence the workplace culture um so they have to give you the right title because we also know that in corporate america it's title driven right yes um so putting you know those folks in leadership roles or, or folks like myself in leadership roles it gives you the power to influence mm-hmm. right and then even um some of your colleagues that aren't quite as open Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, to diversity they're still more likely to be compliant Mm -hmm. because of the role yeah yeah I like that Um, so what do you believe can happen if more people raise their hands to do something different you know um, Mm -hmm. or came out of their shell like what you did you know you were able to put yourself in a role where you it was new for you Mm -hmm. yeah you know I think Being passionate about what you do gives you the opportunity to thrive, right? So, yeah, I knew procurement. I knew contracts. I, you know, negotiated multi-million dollar deals, but I wasn't passionate about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like my career uh, was okay, but it was kind of stagnant. It was Mm -hmm. just a job. But then by raising my hand to do something else, it opened the door for me to do something that I had passion behind, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I felt. Uh, I was excited to learn more about this topic. You know, I I became more of a student, right? And then it also opened the door for leadership because uh, senior leadership sees that. They want employees that are passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in this role, you're somewhat of a spokesperson for the company you work for. Exactly. As well, right? So, yeah, I think the raising my hand definitely opened the door for, I guess, what, what my life's work or what I'm really passionate about doing mm-hmm. and gave me joy in my career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Good. And what do you believe the impact of your work will have on a small and on a large scale? So, um, you know, I think small, really small and large, but on a small scale, you know, I can help one business grow or help, you know, push to have an internship on a project uh, that we have by diver- uh, for diverse candidates. So mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, a one-off type thing. But I think on a larger scale, the more businesses I can coach or, or empower or give an opportunity to get on our supply chain or even if they aren't a fit for us, say, hey, I like your business proposition. This is what you should do to fine tune it. I think it's a ripple effect and economic impact, right? Because if you look back to what I shared at the beginning, I worked for a small woman owned firm Mm. when I was in college. Mm -hmm. The seeds that she planted in me have now come full circle Mm -hmm. and I'm helping businesses just like the one that employed me as a young intern to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Create more jobs. Full circle right there. Um, so down the road, um, as more companies are becoming more inclusive, per okay. se, yeah. <laughs> let's just say in a perfect world, all these companies are just so inclusive and diverse. <laughs> like, <Right>. you know, <laughs> how do you see your role either being affected um, or what does that role look like as more organizations are becoming more inclusive? So I I actually see the profession um, expanding, right? Because, you know, companies in in every other aspect of their business, they're always looking to move the needle. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could say, all right, we we included, you know, 30 percent of the subcontracting dollars on this project for diverse businesses. Or, you know, we move the needle with, you know, minority hires. Right. So it's always taking it to the next level. So I think the role will expand, right? Okay. So that's where I see it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, 
so when you say expanding, like, do you have a vision or maybe an idea of maybe how it evolves? So um, many of us are in an HR space. I'm, I'm blessed not to be under one particular organization. We have diversity as its own entity. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, so I think that's where the trend is going to go. And that's go- interesting. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it, you're right. Uh, most of um, the spaces I see are, are human resources. Right. So it's like, right. okay, you're under human resources under this subject. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, they're, they're a very effective partner. Okay. Right. So yes. I, I'm very good friends. <laughs> you have to be, right? And, yes. In the <laughs> HR space. play well together. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I think being your own department it says okay yeah this is just as important as finance it's just as important as hr or operations so that's why as a company we've invested and made it its own entity wow to influence the workplace culture so Hmm. and how we do business that's really interesting Mm -hmm. if especially some of these large organizations that haven't done it yet i'm very interested to see what that will look like once they start to uh take that trend it, you know, and it's really uh, like a five year ramp up time. So a lot of these companies, because I've you know participated in disparity studies and you know um, corporate planning mm-hmm. for diversity and everything, mm-hmm. and it really takes a while, right? Mm-hmm. So um, you have to establish goals, get a support team. Quite often, you hire a subject matter expert consultant uh, to do the work because. You know, you can't overburden the staff that's already there doing, doing that work, okay. day-to-day activities, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have to make sure you have the proper funding, positions in place, so it's a lot. Right. So it's a ramp-up time. Right, right. So um, how can someone like me or in my space, you know, be more diverse or um, inclusive or aware? Like, what would your expectations of me be? So I would say, uh, Listen. Um, just recently, you know, I sat down with a group of um, advocacy organizations and just listened to their perspective, right? Mm-hmm. And most of them didn't look like me. I mean, they were still part of the uh, diverse, right, community, mm-hmm. but um, just getting ideas, being a good listener, and also building relationships um, across the aisle, right? Because, um, you know, I can go back to a Bible verse, right? A three-stranded mm-hmm. cord is not easily broken, right? So mm-hmm. you can't carry this, you know, by yourself, Absolutely. right? So mm-hmm. reaching across the aisle, because I find um, a lot of my champions mm-hmm. um, are people that don't look like me. Mm-hmm. Right? And you know what? You're very, you're <laughs> right about that, you know? And mm-hmm. we have to, that's that's how we're able to get funded for certain things as well, you know, and bringing them in allows them to see our perspective and Mm -hmm. vice versa. And Mm -hmm. for us to be able to be more well, well rounded. Um, And then, you know, especially because I was, I think I can't remember who I was talking to, but, you know, I was just explaining to them, you know, like I'm not just women empowerment. I'm Mm -hmm. not just Mm -hmm. black woman, Mm -hmm. baby and C. Yes, I am a, black woman I'm a woman of color but you know I need perspectives from other people I need perspectives from males Mm -hmm. you know we have to learn from everyone because then we're only we're so narrow minded on just what we want and what's good for us it's like we're missing the boat on everything else you know and so we have to also be inclusive and learning Mm -hmm. from all of them and you know I welcome people on my as guests to be on here so that my audience can hear what they have to say as well because um, like you said, those are people are every, anyone can be your champion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyone can be your champion, and we need a diverse background to help influence and push us to that next level as well. Yes, you you should always have a collective of people that are in your circle or on your team that mm-hmm. you know don't look like you. There's been many times where I may have proposed something or an idea, and it wasn't necessarily supported initially. Mm-hmm. And in the next meeting, I sat quiet. Mm -hmm. And when the topic came up again, one of my counterparts that um, doesn't look like me spoke up. And guess what happened? Voila. Exactly. (laughs) So, so, you know, as long as you get out of your head that, one, you don't have to do anything. Number two, you don't always have to be the front runner. Mm -hmm. Right. You can have the idea and Mm -hmm. let somebody else sell the idea. Mm -hmm. Right. On Mm -hmm. your behalf. And, you know, I think that better positions you and, and just. 
Well, open. the power is in like the team, mm, right? absolutely. <laughs> like yeah, so it's like absolutely. You know, I'm I'm in sales, and mm-hmm. like you say, when you got the right people on the team, <laughs> <laughs> if I got LeBron, you know right. that can I I gotta make sure I can score. I right. don't. It's better right. to have a percentage of something than zero. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm gonna get my team together no matter what it looks like, so that we can put our best foot forward to win. Right. And we want to win. Right. You know, and sometimes winning um, and then getting in that position to be able to, you know, whatever our other goals mm-hmm. are, we got to win first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and even with opportunities, you know, once you've built relationships, those people will speak up for you, mm-hmm. you know, when you're not in the room. I, I you know, even most recently, um, I had the opportunity to present um, – to a group of senior leaders and I had no idea um, until about a week before the presentation I was going to be on the roster but um, they came to me and said hey so and so said you were a really good public speaker so we want to add you to the presentation so that's what I mean you know you don't have to toot your own horn Mm -hmm. right your actions will speak for themselves yeah yeah oh I like that Um, so what do you believe the difference in female and male leadership (laughs) is especially when it comes to that executive C-level okay Hmm. so I would say um, women consider a little bit more how something's going to make a person feel Mm -hmm. right even though they're um, the person I work for she's uh, very ambitious right Mm -hmm. so they can be results driven but they're also going to consider the person factor mm-hmm. right a little bit more at least that's what I've seen um, male leadership uh, you got to make the message short and sweet <laughs> they listen in bullets yeah <laughs> okay right you just need you know three steps mm-hmm. you know want to leave them with three tidbits right to remember um, but I think I'm, I'm seeing a change in the dynamic with men in leadership too because the more women Right, that move up the ladder. They've got to learn how to communicate mm-hmm. with um, more than just the same gender. Right, so Absolutely. I see them working to improve those soft skills. Mm-hmm. But that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, you know what? I think you're right because um, being aware of who's mm-hmm. around them, where it's like, oh, I'm not just you know, it's not just me yes. and my guys or whatever here yes. talking. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and what advantages of climbing the corporate ladder do you see for, you know, other ambitious people? Because we're, I feel like we're in this age right now where everything's just so entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. um, driven and everyone wants to have, have their own business, which is awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's almost like we forget that you still need some type of, um, you need some, you need, you need to be molded. Yeah. Right. And so what advantages or disadvantages do you see of, you know, still being in a corporate setting or learning, you know, and then maybe going off on your own or even working, you know, at that executive leadership position and not being an entrepreneur? Okay, so I would say if you excuse me are looking into entrepreneurship, working for a corporation, that's an excellent way to learn the ins and outs of business. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, number two, a lot of people think when they become an entrepreneur, oh, I'm going to make money in the first six months. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very difficult, right? So I think having a job with some benefits and steady income allows you the luxury of being creative mm-hmm. and growing your business and pacing yourself because, you know, your mortgage is still getting paid, right? Mm-hmm. While you have this check coming in opposed to being in panic or desperation mode because God, I got to close this deal in 30 days or 60 days or you know I'm going to be evicted right. or, you know my car is going to get towed right <laughs> so I think there's a benefit there um, for entrepreneurs and being in the corporate America space I think being inside a company if it's a progressive company there's power and being first because you open doors for other people it's about making a path right Mm -hmm. and then two um i would just say the training opportunities that have been offered to me or exposure you know in corporate america Mm -hmm. you know the training is like very (laughs) i will say that the training that you get is so expensive 
Uh, number one, if you were to pay yes. for that yourself, yes, I mean that's a true that's a true investment. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's almost like an organization is paying for you to you know learn and yeah. get these skills, acquire these skills, so that well, number one, they're investing in you, so that you can come back right. and perform for them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you have to have that mindset where it's like, okay, you know what? If I want to do this, how can I transition or you know put the, correlate this to what I want to do? Right. You know, and so taking those notes and keeping right. them for yourself, um, you know, and just being smart, smart about mm -hmm. it. And, you know, they, you know, you learn skills like your elevator pitch. Yeah. But that's universal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Personal branding. That's mm -hmm. universal. So right. those are skills that are transferable over to anything that you do. Right. 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 And, you know, luckily you may work for a company that's willing to invest in you in that area. So. Yeah. So, Tiffany, tell us, is there anything else you would like to add or um, leave us with? Wow. Okay. Um, just looking back, some advice that I would give my mm -hmm. former self. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always learn these things and you're like, oh, I need to tell somebody else. That. Right, so right. Not step in the same <laughs> pothole, right? Uh, never be afraid to ask for help mm -hmm. whether you're an individual contributor or a leader right because not asking for help will put you in a stressful situation and it's it is actually a certain level of arrogance because mm -hmm. I guarantee you somebody else in that organization probably has the answer mm -hmm. or can help you find the answer um, the farther you go in your career learn how to outsource mm -hmm. <laughs> in your personal life right mm -hmm. because you have to keep balance and um, if you try to do it all yourself mm -hmm. in your workplace arena and at home, something's going to fall, right? Mm -hmm. um, control your calendar. Mm. Control your calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, put your lunchtime on your schedule. Put your outside activities on your schedule. Put your workout time on your schedule because that's establishing boundaries early mm -hmm. and protecting your time. Remember, um, as a leader, they're paying you for your thoughts, not what you necessarily do mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. you gotta have the space to think and you know develop right yeah self-care um, yes yeah. self-care you can't is... be your best if you're not taking care of yourself <laughs> absolutely so self-care mm -hmm. is imperative you know and I guess one thing that one more thing I would say is don't obsess over your perceived mistakes mm. don't rehearse that over and over and over in your head look at it as a learning experience mm -hmm. um, as long as the company didn't go under for it they're mm -hmm. not going to penalize you for right. it the rest of your career right? <laughs> right you know and part of growth is about taking risks so sometimes they're not always gonna mm -hmm. work out mm -hmm. as you plan but you're willing to take the risk right so don't obsess over your mistakes and take time to reflect mm -hmm. on your successes and jot them down because just like you learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. you learn from your successes as mm -hmm. well yeah Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those were good. How <laughs> many tips? Was that three, five? Three, five, something <laughs> like that. Who's I love, yeah. No, those were good. Those were really good tips. So tell me, what does it mean to you to discover your best self? Hmm, I'm going to think about that for a minute. <laughs> when you come to the place where you find joy in something you do every day, that's that to me that's discovering your best self right and then you're doing something that's fulfilling that leaves a legacy behind right you know your gifts uh will make room for you and those things that you are naturally good at you mm -hmm. know once you've been able to hone on that that's discovering your best self right mm -hmm. you know quite often we want to stick ourselves in a box or we pick this career because it'll make money or you know we think that this will open up doors in leadership just by picking this job but if you're not passionate about it you know, you're not mm -hmm. going to elevate in that space. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. honing in on what you do naturally and perfect it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So, Tiffany, tell um, us where we can find you <laughs> <laughs> or what is it, you know, moving forward um, since you're in this space, you know, mm -hmm. real quick, just tell us what is it that you are seeing yourself you know do as far as like discovering your best self and your next journey mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you want to do so I, I really 
would like to focus on, you know, some of my philanthropic work. Um, I actually participated in Project Blueprint with United Way, okay. you know, and I volunteer for with several organizations, um, one being, you know, Suits for Sons, where they develop young college age men and prepare them for the workplace and entrepreneurship. Um, I work with uh, an organization called Revision. Okay. So they redirect um, students that have maybe run into issues with the law okay. to thwart the um, classroom to pl- prison pipeline, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I guess I just see myself continuing to um, enhance my knowledge in mm-hmm. the DNI space, continuing to grow in this role, and really just making an impact on my community you mm-hmm. know how many people did I help how many doors did I open and that's really my focus okay now and yeah that's discovering <laughs> my best self there right great great <laughs> great so they can find you on Instagram at yeah, at Tiff's Perspective that's T-I-F-F-S Perspective no underscore and then of course connect with me on LinkedIn and that's Tiffany last name P is in picture E is in echo A Y Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again, you guys, for listening to Discover Your Best Self. Um, Tiffany was so awesome today and sharing her gems and, you know, (laughs) perspective um, and just sharing your journey with us. That's what we're here to do because we want others to learn from, you know, your experiences and successes. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. This is great. (laughs)